Hi guys, here we are going to paint gardens and trees, well trees that are in gardens anyway. Uh, so I've got this picture here, which is a bit of Bald Hill, taken several years ago. Um, and it has a nice uh, dappled shade, I'm always a big fan of dappled shade. Uh, so here I've prepared a board, this is just a canvas board and it's uh, been primed with gesso and also yellow ochre. I was watching online how to paint acrylics and they recommend you should gesso everything uh, <clears throat> and also have your ground mixed in with that. So I don't know if you can see, I have sketched it out a bit. Um, I hope you can see, uh, but I'm going to actually go in and block some of the main features in, uh, probably in purple because that's my favourite colour. And remember with acrylics you can actually uh, uh, paint over everything so I'm just going to block in uh, so there's a door here and the reason why I've chosen this picture is that it has a path receding into the painting and if you can almost lure your viewer into the painting uh, it makes uh, for a very pleasing painting I found out so I'm just using water here with some diluted purple just to block in the main elements and you can see it's got this classic perspective so the vanishing point of the path is right there, I think, if we just went like that. So it's just getting that vanishing point. And my eye level is here, and that's the horizon line, not that you can see a horizon. And that's where the vanishing point always ends up. And over here, we've got a nice circular flower bed. I'll just pop that in. And then we've got these box hedges, which are quite structural, um, which follow this nice round path round. And then we have another box hedge here. Oops, that's a bit wrong. So I'm just going to block those in. And then I'm just looking where that is. And again, this box hedge follows the path round. And it's uh, quite a boxy structure. And then over here, we have another hedge, which goes in there. And hedge, hedge, hedge. And then I've got a tree. I just want to catch the main branches. Uh, so we want one there and one there and I'm going to be painting over all this but hopefully um, it will still peek through and I won't lose the detail. I think what I might do, just because this is such a mass of green and trees and goodness knows what else, is edit a few of the trees out so it's not so confusing. So we've got something over there, um, coming down here. So I'm just going to block those in and we'll have some branches over here. And then I've got my dappled sun, which gives structure to this. So I've got my box hedge here. I've got some spiky things here. I've got some bushes here. Over here, another bush, another tree. And then I'm going to put the little doorway in because, again, that sort of invites the viewer of your painting into the painting. Um, and it's always a, a, a lovely thing to do that you get the viewer's eyes to wander around the painting um, in the way you want it and not to fling them off. And that's all in composition. I was just thinking about Renoir's The Boating Party, which we did some time ago. And that painting is absolutely perfect because your eye just travels around through the people and almost ends up in the middle. And that's the kind of thing you want. So I'm going to get a bigger brush and I'm going to do some more blocking in. What I'm going to do, I've got my handy dandy um, Tupperware palette here, which works really well. All my colours are there and they've all lasted for over two weeks now. Some of them are going a bit crusty, mainly the ones that aren't full. So I'm just going to add a bit of Brudian Green to that purple. Whoa, that's a lovely colour. That's a lovely colour. Look at that, just gorgeous. Um, and I'm not using a Stay Wet palette, uh, I'm just going to crack on, I've got lots of palettes here and I'm hoping it's going to work. And I am painting quite quickly, so I want to block in my dark areas. So obviously I need more Viridian and more purple. Whoa, yum yum yum. And a bit more Viridian. Mm, a bit more Viridian. Make it a bit bluey green, so I've got that going on. And I'm just going to block in these areas here where the darks are. So I'm going to build up the painting. Um, not almost like doing an oil painting, but I just want to block in the dark areas. And the reason why you want to paint on a, grind, a ground um, 
is uh, watching this uh, guy, Clyde Five Art, who's this little Welshman who knows all about acrylics apparently, um, is so you don't suffer from snow blindness, which I think is a good point, but you're not fighting against the white all the time. So that's going there, that's going there. And then I'm just going to dilute it a little bit. It's made a fantastic blue, look at that, brilliant green and purple. Um, I'm just going in here uh, to put my dappled shade in. This is one of the uh, big features of this painting. So I just want to block them in, in almost a wash. Uh, so then I can refine the light later. So blocking in. And it gives this sense of receding distance. You've got these different shapes of shadow over here and over here. And that's quite dark. And this is quite dark. So I'm just getting my brush clean. And I'm going to add a little bit more darkness around here and around here. So uh, I suppose the big thing about painting is to have the courage. To have the courage that you know you're going to build up this painting. Um, and over here, so that's going to be sort of my darts within the trees. Oh, I need some dark on the box head here, uh, particularly the flower bed. So I'm just blocking in my dark. So this is more or less an underpainting. And then I'm probably going to abandon this palette. Just use up the last bit of paint over here because that is very dark. The flower bed, and there's some nice fluffy shadow there. And over here, and then there's um, just here as well. So that's got kind of a bluish tinge because it's further away, and I think there's some blue purpley shadows there. I'm just conscious I don't have any more water. Uh, so now I'm going to crack in and I'm going to start doing the sky. I'm going to use another little separate palette because the blues won't be so prominent. So I'm taking my cerulean blue. The colour make the skies and some white. And watching Bob Ross, I actually you put the white on first and then you add the cerulean blue, which might be an idea. Let's try that. Uh, so I put the white on first. And so it's only little bits that are showing through, so I'm not going to be too fussy about this, but you want that light in there. So if I just take white, mm. And I've already got the blue on the brush and I'm not worrying about where my trees are. It's just a, a sort of guide that obviously needs to be whiter. And I hope you're all watching Bob Ross. He's a phenomenon, you know. Um, there was a good documentary on Radio 4 recently, Happy Little Trees, it was called, all about how young people are taking him up as a sort of form of meditation. Not necessarily do the painting, but just to listen to him in their stressful lives. Um, so um, people under 30, just uh, just put him on and listen. And occasionally they start painting. I'm going to have to not worry about the clip at the moment. But just so that there's some sky peeking through the trees when I come round to doing those. Um, oop, I just want that a little bit lighter. And you can see, you can actually, if you paint like the clappers, you can bl blend acrylics quite well. So I want that to be lighter at the bottom. And hopefully... Um, we'll have some sky over here, uh, but it's mostly green, as you can tell. So I'm going to crack on and do my greens in a sec. Okay, so that's the sky blue, and I'm just going to leave that. Uh, you can be a bit more uh, detailed, because you won't be painting like the clappers. So I've got my trusty kitchen towel to hand. Always useful to have, just so I'm not... Sorry, I've got my breath in my mouth just so I'm not uh, <clears throat> uh, taking water into the paint. So now I'm going to mix up my greens. And we did this when I did the bluebell wood. So here I've got a handy dandy color called sap green. And this is actually from uh, the set I got from the works. And I'm going to start slopping some green on. I, obviously I can't paint there at the moment. So I'm just gonna put some on here and see what happens. And you can see it's got a different tone um, because it's on the yellow ochre. And I'm just going to grab a bit of yellow and zip up that green. Maybe this yellow is going a bit thick. Zip up that green. And you can see you're getting this really nice bright green. So I might go in there and think about adding bits there. And over here I've got my flower beds over here and over here and my box hedges. I might take a little bit of this emerald green 
which you can see is quite bluey and add a little bit of burnt umber to that and we're getting a really nice dark green there and I'm going to go in and add a bit here for my box hedges and I'm using this uh, big square brush because I want big structural strokes blocking in areas and over here so again thinking about underpainting this is all dry now so I could block some things in there and over here I think I need a little bit more yellow going on maybe I'll try my lemon yellow I think it needs using up Ooh, that's a very nice lime green we've got going on there I'm going to start thinking about adding these areas and I think what I'm going to need to do is actually get those darks in a little bit more and then I can build the foliage up on that so I've got this flower bed over here so this is a dark green which is disappearing into that purple and the good thing about blocking in with the darks is that you will build it up you will have some of it poking out from where you were so I'm just want to really block this in quite quickly uh, what was I on emerald green mm. and burnt umber the dark brown Blah! oops I think I've just used purple by mistake I just used purple by mistake however that will make a nice dark color and a little bit of lemon yellow to that and see what happens Ooh. so yellow and purple should neutralize well that's a nice dark I think I might continue on with that and have some dark areas in here and here again so let's try that again so I'm going to take some more sap green and some uh, burnt umber oh no that's the purple again and burnt umber and you can see you're getting a nice darker green there more of a brown actually let's grab a bit more of that green and see what happens there we go so I'm getting a nice dark green uh, over here and over here so I'm blocking this in big structural strokes and I will refine areas Ooh, that's still a little bit wet but never mind and over here and over here so this is my dark green so big structural strokes and there's some green over here so I'm just picking this up uh, oh my box hedge not yet my box hedge so I'm just going in there add that there and then I want a slightly lighter green for the top and I'm actually trying to keep the brush strokes going, to doing what the box hedge is doing. I have a little bit of dark going on there. And back to my sap green up here. So as I said, it's having the courage to know that uh, an underpainting will develop. So everything, uh, you don't have to do every little leaf perfectly to start with. You can actually add it later. Oh, would you believe it? My cranks are drying up already, blighters. Uh, so over here we've got some nice light. Blocking those in. Picking up some of just pure sap green now. So I want a variation of kind of foliage here. And I will add uh, more detail as we go along. Oops, I've just picked up some of the dark bits. Got a dark bit over there and one over here. Uh, and that's a bit bluey in the far distance it's quite blue and then I've got this big old tree over here just going to use sap green to block in some of that area but on the other hand with such a green painting and it's also a function of how the photograph printed out um, it is very very green so what I want to do is vary those greens a bit so I'm adding some of this rather peculiar mixture I've just uh, invented of green and purple but that is still a bit wet um, over here um, and I'm going to add some yellow to that to back up some of this area here there we go some yellow with that so blocking in um, I'm going to add a little bit of white to this mixture now to see what I end up with which is kind of a cool sludgy color but on the other hand, I do want a little touch of something resembling blue in that for the far away <coughs> foliage. So I've got this uh, sort of sludgy blue I made earlier. And so I've got this blue here and it's all quite blue over there. Um, and 
we've got the top of the wall, which I can see is just catching the light. So I'm just going to block that in. And then we've got some foliage behind as well. Um, and I'm just going to grab a little bit more of that blue in here because this is obviously a kind of bluish plant, which is far away. Um, and then I've got some, something going on here. But with uh, landscapes, and we've done this before, try and paint the furthest away bit first. So I'm just rinsing off my brush. I think I might go to a slightly smaller one. Yeah, no, not yet. Uh, <clears throat> so I've got this foliage that's behind uh, this wall, which again is more neutral uh, because it's further away. So it's got a slight bluish tinge to it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of sap green to that. Um, so I'm just going to go in there and get that foliage working. So I just want a little bit more of this weird blue. And I'm going to have to build up some contrast. So I can do this foliage that's really far away and then worry about that big tree later. And I think I need a little bit of something sparkly and green in there so I'm just adding a little bit of my uh, yellowy green and I'm going to go in there so you've got various colours going on and I don't know what that foliage is actually doing far away but let's have a look so I'm just mixing that in and it will be covered eventually by the tree in the foreground so I'm just varying these colours a bit and what I'm noticing is it because I'm not using a stay wet palette I'm just going to spray that to keep, to keep the paint active. Oh, that's a good colour. So that's my sludgy brown with another sludgy brown. And I'm just going in there. And I'm going to grab some of that blue again. Just to have that feeling of that foliage being quite far away. And if you notice, I'm just putting on blobby strokes. I'm a big fan of painting with acrylics, almost in a pointless fashion. I think as everybody knows. Uh, because... Um, uh, getting the same colour again is quite hard, I find, with acrylics. So I'm just grabbing some lemon yellow there, and I want to put some of that in there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of white in there, because we've got this very faint, uh, sort of gleaming foliage in the background. And I'm just varying my brush strokes a bit and blobbing it on happily. Um, so a little bit more blue. I think I need a little bit more contrast in there, so I'm just going to take some of the darker green, some of my weird blue, and add, see if I can add a few darker areas. Trick is not to sweat the small stuff. I think there is a little bit more contrast needed, so I'm just taking some of the ah, <laughs> oh, that blue, which is a bit on the vicious side. And so I just want to have a little bit of contrast in here. To indicate different kinds of trees. So we're getting the idea of uh, uh, far away foliage. So then I'm going to come down and start thinking about doing the wall. So I think I might switch to a slightly smaller brush. So this is a slightly smaller square of brush. That one is a size eight, I think. And it's covered in paint. Size six. The big one's size six, and this is size four. Um, and then I'm going to go in here and start thinking about trying to do that wall. And what I need to do is actually bring up the contrast with the top of the wall uh, with the foliage underneath. So I'm actually throwing some white in there. And I just want to catch the idea of the, the foliage at the top of the wall catching some light. And I think I might need a bit of lemon yellow in there, just make it sparkle. Da -da -da, da -da, sparkle, sparkle. And then it's coming down to these lovely creepers, I think they're clematis or something. Oh, we remember gardens. So that is quite a cool uh, green, but it's quite dark. So I'm using this blue mixture. This is uh, cobalt blue and my various mixtures. And I'm going to come in here and add some of that. And I don't think that is dark enough. So to get the light into your painting, what you need to do is actually get the darks right. So I'm going in here, and so this is kind of a, my sap green, which I think I might go for a bit of emerald. Ah! Emerald green, which is a bit lurid, so I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow, yellow ochre to that. That's looking better. So I'm just going in there and blobbing some bits on. No, I don't like that, so I'm going to add a bit more yellow to that. 
blob it on and I, what I need is a dark now uh, just to give that feeling of um, the light so actually adding a dark here can you see so I just want to get the idea of the light changing as it goes around the corner so I'm just going to grab a little bit more emerald green throw it in there and see what happens Ooh, well, that's good um, and actually by doing you find out what works if you've got a sort of basic palette try and stick to more or less those same colours. As I say with acrylics, sometimes it's really, really difficult to re-find a colour that you made and that you really like and you've got a blob on it and you have to do this, that and the other to it. Um, you want to be able to know what you mix. So what you can do is stick to a reasonably limited palette. And I did talk about mixing greens before. So a golden rule of thumb, when you're faced with these rather lurid greens, so this is an emerald green, which normally I don't like. It's got a lot of blue in it. Um, but if you add yellow ochre to that, you get a very nice grassy green. So the general rule of thumb with greens, I find, is use the earth colours to make up the difference, um, uh, to make up a more natural green. So over here, I've got this nice bluey, tingy thing going on. Um, so I'm just going to add a bit more cobalt blue to my mix. Look, and that's ended up... Uh, yeah. A rather odd colour but I want that dark and I want it to have a slightly bluish tinge over here so as you see I'm just building up variations of tones and coming forward uh, so I think that's all right I might have a little bit more dark in there here and there so I'm just picking up this peculiar colour I made adding a few darks in there and then that's coming down to the foreground so I'm building up <clears throat> The foliage of my garden, I hope. Um, so I'm just going to add a little bit of white to that colour. Ooh, maybe that colour. Maybe some more white over here to catch a little bit of sparkle on the end of this foliage. And I'm painting wet and wet, so I'm getting a bit of blending. But I can always go back and have a have a fiddle. But I'm, as you know, I'm against fiddling as a rule. So we're looking at us uh, sort all of creating this nice idea of blue foliage behind. And I'm going to have to spray my palette again. It's all drying like the cutters. Never mind. And then I'm going to get some nice yellow. Mix it into my sap green. Over here. And see if I can catch that. And it's a bit thin. So I'm going to add a bit of white to that. I mean the yellow is a bit transparent. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to beef up my yellow. And my green. Get a nice yellowy green that's going to have a bit of heft and a bit of uh, opacity to it. So we've got this nice sparkly hedge over here. Perhaps I should have done the door first. Never mind. Sparkly hedge, sparkly hedge. Um, and I'm going to grab a little bit more yellow. Ah! Well, that's sparkly. Uh, and remember, you can always go back and fiddle with acrylics. So I'm just popping in here and it's got this nice light that goes all the way to there and I'll worry about that in a minute. Meanwhile back to trying to think about doing that door. Um, so it's kind of white so I'm going to take a little bit of uh, white and a little tiny bit of paint grey which I don't have so let's have a little bit of I think oh that's purple. Um, so I'm going to use purple and brown and see what happens. Whoa I've got a very peculiar colour. And then I'm going to add a little bit of French ultramarine Whoa, that's gone completely blue. So I'm going to take that away. And I'm going to add a bit more brown to that. So brown and brown and dark blue make quite a nice black or grey. So that's a nice grey. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit more white to that. And see if I can get this almost off white. Whoa, no, I think I need it whiter. So I'm just adding a little bit more white to that again and I'm going to try and put that doorway in. I'm going to pretend it's all white. So that's the uh, the far away door. I'm just going back to my, oh that's not my little round brush. This is my little round brush and I'm going to, I think I'll leave that for the moment but I just want to uh, tidy that up a little bit. I'm just relying the water that's on the brush of which there isn't very much. 
and tidy that in a little bit and I could add a door later and I can add some more foliage later but meanwhile I've got these nice colours actually and they will do really well for my shadows so I've got this grey uh bluey grey purpley grey and so I'm going in here maybe I should make it darker so I'm going to add a little bit of purple a little bit of French ultramarine that purple is very strong that's the, the nice Windsor and Newton purple all right there we go whoa that's a hell of a color uh, so I'm going to neutralize it a little bit with some brown and I'm going to add a little bit more white to that to see what it's like otherwise that's a bit on the purple side so a bit more French ultramarine I think whoa that's very French ultramarine-y see what's happening well that's nice actually I think I might go with that so I've got this nice ah, maybe it's a bit strong so I do need to neutralize it down again oh look I, no no that's not my black I think that's my phthalo blue so I'm going to add a bit of brown to that and a bit more French ultramarine shouldn't tidy too much but never mind and I'm going to add a little bit of white to that to see what it really thinks it's doing oh there we go so a variation I think of those two colors I think will be all right that's a little bit more neutral so I'm looking at my darker areas here and I'm just going to block these in and take a little bit of that as well a bit of the purple and block them in and it's getting very gray up here um so I definitely need some black but never mind so French ultramarine burnt umber should produce a reasonably good neutral grey so I'm going to plop some of that in and over here too and what I'm going to do I'm going to refine uh, the dappled sun later so I'm going to put some of that lighter area in there uh, so the darkest point of any shadow is pretty much on the edge but when you get within the shadow you're getting this nice uh, it sort of refines the light so I'm just going to make a little bit of a lighter version of this and put some in here. Maybe some of that. And I'm just going in here. So I just want to block in my big shadow shapes. Over right here. That's a bit on the lurid side. So block, 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 block. And I I need a little tiny bit more of this lighter grey that I mixed in. So in fact the shadows here seem the darkest because you can't see within them so you're just getting the idea of big lumps of shadow. <clears throat> so I'm in there like that and then I'm going to get a big old brush and block in I'm going to make this up into a, a big lot of grey so I can actually get the lighter version of the path so maybe I used a bit too much white but here so you can see so I've got this lighter version of what the path is up to and the nice thing about acrylics is that you can always add to them so I'm just oh dear just taking a little bit of yellow ochre I just want that to warm up this here and there I don't want this very cool kind of blue color to be the entire path I do want it to vary a bit so a little bit more yellow ochre in the mix so it does vary a bit but unfortunately that is mostly still wet so I'm just gonna plonk on some shadow but I just want to get my tonal values sorted out so I'm just gonna take a little bit of white to get those areas sorted ah there we go and there and there and there so i'm going to take my brush sideways i think just to make it more normal uh just if you can keep your brush strokes going the same way as whatever you're painting like we, we did when we we were doing the sea um it's just it makes uh your painting um seem more logical i think so if you can go sideways when something is flat go sideways so I'm just getting my basic values in there and I want a bit more dappled shade around here so I'm going to have a quick dapple and I can go back and add some more areas later. 
Um, and so I'll just move it over the white, move that yellow ochre. Again, I'm have a quick dapple, 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 dapple. And there is a value in painting fast because uh, it gives you um, not enough time to think, uh, which is what's happening to me now. But um, it does help in freeing yourself up a bit. I think um, I sometimes I get very tight and my paintings don't work so well, but my demonstration pieces are much more freer and easier. Um, so if you do things quite quickly, when the mood is upon you, you can actually uh, get a, end up with a much fresher painting rather than having to think about painting every single blade of grass. So here I've got some yellow ochre here. I'm going to add a little bit more white to that just to warm up this grey a bit. And I'm going to blob some on there. Ooh, maybe that's a bit too much, but I'm just thinking about that. I will add some more shadow there and I think I want this to be much lighter. There seems to be a lot of sun here. So I'm just going to add a little bit more white there. Okay, and there's a little bit there and that. So we're getting the idea of sunlight on a path. And then I'm going to pick up my slightly smaller brush and start tackling the foliage over here. So I'm just going to give my palette a spray again. Excuse me. And I'm going to have this, uh, this nice, very green green up here to catch a few greeny things over there. But I don't just want to rely on that one green. I think paintings become a bit dull when you do that. So I'm going to do something weird in a minute. Just bear with me. And that's oh, there's another bush over there. I'm going to pick up that dark, squish it in, and add that bush in there. But can you see I'm just doing little tiny strokes and it's actually making, I think, that area seem more interesting. So now I'm going to, I've got this uh, kind of uh, nondescript green. I'm just going to see if I can get that flower bed there. Um, and then I want to darken that down a bit. So I'm just taking my dark mixture of my blue. There's my green. Maybe a bit of that. Ooh, eek. Hit and miss. Uh, this is me not wanting to rely on nothing but sap green because then uh, it just gets a bit dull. So here we are, there's a nice little flower bed over there. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of dark, catch that flower bed doing that thing. And then I've got another flower bed here, which is in the full sun and is just sparkling. So I want to have a little bit more dark behind there so the light will seem lighter. A little bit of dark going on there. And uh, just to orientate myself, so I've got here, I've got a flower bed here. And there's one here not doing very much. So I'm going to take my smaller round brush, bright, vibrant, uh, light green. So this is lemon yellow mixed in, in with my, oops, my general green mixture. Actually, I think I must have some purple left in this brush, but it's actually adding to it, I think. So we've got these nice light areas here. Now I'm going to add a bit of white to that so they will sparkle. And this is a little bit wet, which is annoying, but never mind. I want to go in there and sparkle, 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 sparkle. Don't worry about what the plants are up to. Um, so, and you can see uh, the brush you choose affects the marks you make. I don't generally like using these round brushes with the acrylics or oils because you get these little pointy marks. But in this case, I think it's working quite well. So we've got this, these flowers leaning over the flower bed there. And coming down here, adjoining uh, the rest of the flower bed. So I'm just picking up the sap green. I'm going to splot it on here to so make that flower bed all come together. And I think I need some lighter versions of that and some darker versions of that. Um, and I'm not going to sweat the small stuff because I don't have time. Uh, so I'm coming down here. So I've got this nice dark area here. So that is actually coming out there. So it's quite good that I mixed up this rather peculiar sludgy colour. And I want to add some lighter versions of the green on top of that. So I'm going to pick up the yellow, yeah, which is practically dry, and go in here and add some lighter versions of that. 
I'm going to add a little bit of white to it so it will have a bit more heft. So it's actually breaking up the edge of that flower bed. Ah, uh, yeah. So a bit of saturine there. So we're getting the idea of, of different kinds of foliage. And then over here, I'm trying to figure out what's happening. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to go in and pick up some more lighter green. And I think I need some darker green. And I think I'm getting rather fed up with sap green. So what I'm going to do is uh, take some of my viridian or emerald green works just as well. Apart from that, I've run out of room. So there's my viridian and I'm going to pick up some oozing crimson, if you can find it, in there. And you get this really nice bluey grey. I'm just going to add a bit of white to that to show you what it's up to. You can see, so that varies a bit. And sometimes you can actually put red on your palette, I mean, on your painting, which is something I might actually do. This is very impressionistic of me. Just add a bit of red in there, and it's actually going to mix with the blue that's already there. And I think there's a flower bed there. Um, <clears throat> so what I want to do is actually, I'll probably wait for that little bit to dry. And I'm going to come around and start working on this hedge here, which is more or less done. It's just a dark shape. So I'm going to pick up some of this colour I've just mixed up and put in some variations within that huge hedge that's there, just so it's not just one colour. Uh, and then over here, there's a bit of foliage. So I'm going to um, just add it. Uh, so I've got this dark sludgy green and I'm just going to add some areas here and I might pick up some of this lighter version but this is all dry. I think I'm painting this on the hottest day of the year so far so I just want to add a few variations. I'm finding that a bit too yellow so I'm going to add some yellow ochre to that and take it over here and see what happens. It's a bit too stark that yellow and then I'm going to pick up my sap green again and put that bush in there. Meanwhile, I've got my box hedge to deal with, um, which sort of does that. So it's got this lighter top. You see, so I'm trying to keep the brush strokes going the way the box hedge goes. And then it comes down here. Oops, that's too light. Um, so I'm just going to take some of this dark colour I mixed up and mix it into my sap green generally and I just want that to be kind of a box hedge going around the corner. And then, oops, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to do this other box hedge over here. Uh, so I think this seems to have a little bit more of a bluer tinge so I'm mixing up some more emerald green in here to dot away on this. And there's a, oh, that's nice and green, isn't it? Um, and then this, this box hedge here. And the box, uh, the top of the box hedge. So I'm just using up some of this lighter version. <clears throat> uh, I'm just going in here. Just want some lightness on the top of there. Da -da -da -da. Okay, it's almost coming together. <clears throat> And then I've got this, oh, damn it, it's dried, curse it. I shall have to make myself a spray wet palette. Okay, so I've got this darker colour here. So I want that to be at the bottom of this box hedge. And I've actually watered this down against my better judgment, just so I can get it to flow easier. So I've got the, the box hedge in the flower bed kind of thing. And we've got flower bed over here, so I'm just going to add a little bit of white to this peculiar colour I've made. And just to soften those edges a bit. And over here as well. And again, I'm trying to keep to what the flower bed might be up to. Uh, now, I can actually now tackle, because I hopefully this is dry. Yes, it's dry. I like my paint on my palette. So I want this light area here help me define my box hedge and there's light coming from here and I just want a little bit of yellow ochre in there I don't want this cool blue all over the place so I'm just going to go in there and there's some sort of sparkle 
going this way and that way. And while I've got it on my brush, I can put some over here. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> I think I need my dark purple over here <clears throat> and over there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm going to again take this dark, this weird dark green that I made. I just want to pop some in there and get that going. Um, so I can go back and fiddle a bit. Uh, so I'm just going to add a few more, a little bit more interest in, in this rather dark area of hedge here. It's all dark because it's in shadow, but I do want to have something going on there. Um, and then I think I need a little bit more yellow. Just to sparkle it up a bit. And then we've got some variations on the theme. So this comes down and this is actually lit. And then I want a little bit more bluey green. Where's my bluey green? There it is. A bit more bluey green just there. So that's almost a path. Um, I'm conscious that time's rattling away with me. So what I'm going to do is actually start track tackling this tree here. I'm just leaning back to have a look at my painting and my box hedge is doing something odd. I'm just going to go in here and add a bit of dark there. This is the wonders of acrylics. It's still going uphill. Never mind. Maybe if I shave it off the top, that would look better. And then we've got some darks in here too. Um, <clears throat> actually, what I'll do while I'm here, I'll just grab a bit more yellow, uh, mix it into my green mixture. And maybe add a little bit of white to that to buck it up to get the idea of that nice dappled light. Well, that's a bit on the pale side, but that gives you us the structure of the hedge. Um, and you can see why I like using these long flat brushes. Apart from that, that's still wet. Um, <clears throat> is that you can get quite a nice line without uh, use it, resorting to that. So I can use it on the side and get this sort of line, a narrower line. And then I've got my box hedge here, and it's catching a little bit of foliage there, a little bit over here, going down here. And I can use that same green in here, just to add a bit more interest to that, that hedge going on there. And then I think, oh, I've got some, I've got this light green on my brush. I want to add a bit of interest up here. Because there's something uh, it's catching some sort of plant I think but so there's a little bit of light in there although that might be a bit too much so I'm going to go in with a slightly darker tone and add some light areas in there so and then we are going to do the tree I think I'm just going to wait for these areas to dry and I might add a bit of sparkle in here because I've got some sparkle left over a bit here and start worrying about doing this tree. So <clears throat> I've got my palette here which is almost dry but so I'm going to use a big old brush. I'm going to get some more kitchen towel just so I can dry my brush. I'm not going to do anything funny with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the big dark shapes within here. I can re-establish my tree, I hope. So this is burnt umber. Ugh. That's Prussian blue. And if you look at tree trunks, they're not generally brown brown. They have a sort of brown tinge sometimes, but generally it's quite a cool brown. And in fact, in watercolours, what I found uh, works best is sap green. I mean, sorry, sepia brown, not sap green. Sepia brown works really well. It's a, it's a colour of squid ink. I don't know if they still make it out of squid ink. Um, and it's a very cool brown and it works ideally for doing trees. And I think I need a better brush for that. So I'm going back to my little round one. And I just want to re-establish some of my branches. Over here, over there. Just so that they will poke through the foliage, what I'm just about to paint. And I'm trying to catch what these branches are up to because each tree has its own little personality, doesn't it? And how 
uh, it grows. I don't know what this is, a rowan or something. It's got those lots of bifurcated leaves. I just want to have, oop, I think there's another tree trunk there, isn't there? So I want those to be poking through <clears throat> and over here I might have one or two. It's going down there. I don't know if there's something going on there. <clears throat> so now I'm going to crack on. Uh, this is a medium sized brush. Do I want that? Probably. Let's use that medium sized brush. So this is at, gradually at the end of its life. But I want to have some darker greens in there. So I've got using the sap green I've got on my brush, mixing it in with this a peculiar colour I've just made which has got burnt amber in it and I want to plonk on some darker versions of foliage and actually it's got a slightly blue tinge you often see this in um, impressionist paintings that if you look at Monet's skies uh, he often does this very blue foliage in fact that's exactly the same colour um, and then adds uh, against the sky, so you can see a fantastic amount of blues in there. I'm just putting in here, so putting in some dark areas. There's a bit going in here as well. <clears throat> so that's where my darts are going to be. I'm just going to resort to some sap green mixed in with that mixture now. And so I'm coming up a slightly lighter tone. Over there and over here, there's a lot of it. Uh, I'm just going to grab some of my cobalt blue. Maybe that will have an effect. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> cobalt blue is pretty much the same as French Ultramarine, but a little bit more feeble. Um, they had that great... Oh, that's working. <clears throat> uh, what was it? Oh, uh, is it fake or forgery? Whatever it was, where they could tell that... Was it a Gainsborough painting or drawing? That was painted with cobalt blue, which was the blue they had before they had French Ultramarine. So um, absolutely fascinating history of um, how colours are made and how they affected art. <coughs> so, I am I going to wait for that to dry? Let's see. So I'm going to take a big old slob, uh, big bit of, um, this is lemon yellow and some sap green. And that's all a bit lurid. So I'm just going to get a little bit of yellow ochre. Oh, that's quite a lot of yellow ochre. That's a lot of yellow ochre. So I'm going to mix that in there, and I think that needs more, oh, I don't know, that's kind of work, but I'm just going to add a bit more lemon yellow to that. So we're getting that nice bright yellow that's not too lurid. So then I can go in and add some foliage on top. So good idea to actually establish your darts first uh, when you're doing trees and then add them, add some colour, um, some lighter colours on later. If you notice with trees, they have their own particular shape and there they are objects in light. So I can compare them to pom-poms. So wherever the direction of light is coming from, unfortunately I don't really have a direction of light on this one, uh, you get this almost pom-pom effect. Apart from that, trees are all sorts of different shapes. Um, I'm just going to pick up some mid-green mid here as well because that is a little bit too bright. So I'm going in here with some mid-green. And I'm just adding these sort of... Uh, foliage shape uh, marks I hope. Uh, coming on here so just to vary those blobs I think I might have to go to a slightly smaller brush uh, to add those marks so I've got a slightly smaller brush here uh, just go in there bit of that and there is such a massive foliage here I could be here all day but I'm just gonna crack on and get some of this nice bright foliage coming down here and I think that needs lemon yellow now I haven't said poo poo bit so I want some lemon yellow in there and I'm just blobbing it on happily yeah, it's looking like it was not looking like that but it is looking like a tree so that's encouraging and then I need something going on here there's some foliage coming down so I want some foliage down here Oops, like this. I, want. I was watching, there's another good artist on the internet uh, called Will Kemp. I don't know if anybody's seen his videos. I'm a bit loath to mention him because as soon as you hear about him, you'll go to him and not look at our lovely videos. But he's very good, a nice young man who seems to know what he's doing. 
and uh, seems to know how to paint with acrylics, which is always a plus. So I'm just going in here, adding some of that lighter area here. Ooh, that's almost working. Ah, that is almost working. If I had more time, I would go on and try and get uh, this foliage there, but you don't want to be here for three hours watching me paint. And actually, I notice what he does is paint on very small canvases, so it makes the painting go quicker. So, and what he said, actually, um, is having these sky holes, um, which is another useful term I hadn't heard before, but um, I do like, yes, this the sky throat poking through um, <coughs> your scene. That's sort of working. Um, it, as I say, it doesn't really look like it, but it does look like something. And then we've got that other one to do. I think I want some more darts in there. So in fact, against my better judgment, I'm just going to use a bit of water so the paint will work. I don't like using water as a rule with acrylics, but needs must because uh, that colour is practically dried up. And we're getting some nice variations of foliage. I think what we need is some more sap green over here. Have some sap green going on in there as well and there was something coming down here so I'm getting this idea of all this nice foliage uh, being lit by the sun like that. okay and then over here I'm just going to take some of the sap green that's limping along on my palette here and I just want to vary that so we've got this nice dark behind so so then we're on the sort of mid-tone of the, uh, this is just pure sap green. As I say, the stuff I got from the works, which had good colours, but they really don't last very long. I think I'm nearly through all the colours I use, just to vary the foliage. So if you put the darts on first, and then you can kind of build up the foliage you need to build up. Yeah. So, ah, that is pretty much done. So I'm just going to spray it in the hope that it will revive for one last ditched attempt or variations on foliage. And I think I want this one back. So that's the very last of my sap green. I will, I do have some more squiddled away. So here I can just make slightly different marks with uh, my brush and these areas so they're not quite so transparent and then <clears throat> I'm going to pick up my nice light colours I made and I just want to add a few areas where the light is catching that foliage so we're building up trees I will maybe have a few medium ones before I go on to the light light ones um, and you can make different marks with different kinds of brushes but I think I think I kind of like that actually it's nice and blocky and not too fiddly. I fiddled and it's gone off the boil again so I'm just going to add some more in here and so I'm coming down here with some foliage going on here and then it's actually ending up in these spiky things I don't know some sort of allium maybe so I'm just going to pick up some dark colours here and I just want to oops Add me alliums. I think that's too dark. It's not showing up. So I just want that lighter area. Just have a variation of foliage. There we go. Um, you can use uh, 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 acrylic extenders. I've got a couple up my sleeve, but I haven't used them because I find that they dilute the colours too much. But maybe I should have. But we've got some spiky things going on there. And then I'm just going to try and resolve that door. So I've got a, quite a small brush here. And what I'm noticing is that it's got this kind of warm, creamy colour. So it's white that's in shade here. It's white that's in shade. So it's um, in shadow, so it's not bright white. But what it's doing is actually picking up reflected colour from the uh the ground so the light's bouncing off the ground bouncing into that white and i'm just adding a bit of yellow ochre to white to make a sort of creamy color 
So I just want to have a, that creamy colour in there. Hmm, I think that needs a bit of grey, but I think all my greys dried up, so I'm just going to have to make another one. So again, French ultramarine, burnt umber, and then a little bit of that white. So I've got this all in there. Damn. So I think I'll add a little bit more white to that and see what happens. So we're getting a quite nice uh, grey colour. So here we are. So there's a door there on this gut. And I just want to pick up some of the darker foliage, maybe here. Give that idea of the foliage around the door. Um, and then I'm going to mix up, I want that black kind of colour. Is that going to go black on me? More or less, it's dark grey anyway. So we've got a darker version of something rather happening here. And as you see, my paint is drying a bit, so I'm just going to add a little bit of water to that. And put, try and put something resembling a door in there. Or not. <clears throat> so, so I'm going to try and bring the painting together now. I don't want to go on for too long. This is nearly an hour. So I'm just going to demonstrate a little bit of the... Um, the path. Let's try that. So I'm going to pick up quite a lot of white, quite a lot of white, add a little bit of yellow ochre to that, yeah. and maybe some more white. Oops, over here. So I've got that kind of thing happening. I'm just going to spray this because I just want to preserve that grey briefly so I just want to go in there with some white again a little small brush and I'm just tidying up this area here and that area there which is still wet so I'm just going to go in here so just making that very light so you're getting that sparkle you can see so this is more or less neutral but here it's very well lit so I'm just going to go on there and add some lighter areas. So you're really getting the feeling of sunshine by having that dark on and then using this bright light color. Can you see, so the light is really coming into it now. So I'm just going sideways as well, just to make sure the path seems like it's really doing a path type thing. And here, Maybe I should use a bigger brush, but you see the idea. And what I can do, even though this paint is dry, I just want to soften these edges of the dappled shade. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to my light colour and almost create a wash effect. So I'm going on there and I just want a little bit of lightness in there. So I'm just softening the edges by using water and almost washing over some of the darker areas. Can you see, so it just softens. And that needs to be softer. And that needs to be whiter. That really does need to be whiter. So that really does need to be buffed up a bit. And I think what I'll have to do is make some more shadow colour, but looking at me dappled shade, I don't want to not to do me dappled shade. It's one of my favourite things. It is very hard to do actually, but it is one of my favourite things to get that softness of the edge around your little sparkle of light. Whoa, that's got a bit round. So I'll just have another one there, maybe another one there. And what I would do normally is actually go back and tidy up some areas. <clears throat> but uh, we're coming up for the hour now, so I think I might stop. But what I can do is just quickly show you. I'm not going to worry about the path, um, uh, the brick on the path. I just want the path to be um, dark. So I'm just going to add a little bit of purple to that. And then a little bit of dark brown to that. Which really didn't work. And some more French ultramarine. And a little bit of brown, a little bit blue, oh there we go, 
So I can go in here and add my flower beds around here. Actually, the darkest point is around the bottom of the bush. And so then I'm going to add a little bit of this lighter colour just to indicate what's happening in the flower bed. In fact, I think I need a bit more brown in there. And again, making little strokes and softening edges where I can. So, and what I would do in the fullness of time is actually tidy up the path a bit. In fact, I might do that and then post the picture afterwards just to tidy it up. But it's been an hour and you're probably fed up with my voice by now. But to build up a uh, acrylic landscape, applies to oils too, what you want to do is uh, <clears throat> start really far away and then come forward, forward, forward. Have a stay wet palette, which I really must make myself one because this one's driving me mad. And think about the tonal difference. So to get the sunshine uh, to be bright, what I had to do is make that dark. So that's how you get light into a painting. So um, try it out yourself. I'm sorry I wussed out and did plein air. It's bad enough doing this anyway, as well as doing plein air. I think I would have gone insane. But I might get round to it yet. And if I do actually do a little painting session in the park, I will let you know. Okay, thanks everybody.